Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Again, it would have been a fine, peaceful muster, but they came over to us. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, it would have been a mute issue. I mean, we would have just went in there, did what we did, and, Mm -hmm. you know, be, be home before dinner mm-hmm. uh, but no they had they had to come over to us and make sure something happened mm-hmm. again I, it was uh pre-planned by nine news and probably even the denver post because the denver post chick was all over it as well too mm-hmm. um, and that's that's the sad thing because now when we do things i used to let the you know the press come in and just kind of be around us not anymore yeah i'm not not going to trust them in any way shape or form i'm not even going to allow them near us because like, i don't know who they're going to bring in and i don't even know if they're going to do something because even the uh that producer for nine news he wasn't he wasn't dressed like a news reporter at all i mean he he looked like he was ready to again riot himself you know he got little his little knee pads on and just just he was even out of place you know for all of us we're looking at because we didn't really believe he was even part of the news initially mm-hmm. yeah. you know we just looked at said out uh, he's <laughs> yeah, it seems weird. I mean, without actually being there and, and being able to judge it for myself or seeing all the footage, like we're saying, the police officers, the, the cops here, they have the footage of everything that happened. And there's a reason oh, yeah. why they decided to arrest this guy. And they kind of reacted to this fast enough that you wonder, like like Tig was saying, why didn't they get in the middle of this in the first place? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, could see, I could see the one down there, but when they started shoving each other, mm-hmm. you know, when... Uh, and the and the aggressive. I think they should have came down and moved in a little bit faster than what they did, because then you know an altercation is about to begin. And you know, for that small of a crowd, I mean, it wasn't a big crowd over there. Um, it might have been mm-hmm. a total of twenty, maybe thirty people at the most. Mm-hmm. And again, there's twenty cops right there at that intersection, mm-hmm. where you know, again, yards away at the. Moment. And you know, they should have started moving in when they, you know, when they started seeing the shoving going on. Yeah, but I- again. I don't know what their command, you know, obviously what the rules of what their rules of engagements were, but I think they could have de-escalated. But again, hindsight's, you know, whatever. You don't shoot somebody in the face for freaking being slapped. No, and then also like you, you would, you should know that that's, if something's going to go bad, it's going to go bad at the end when everyone's yeah. trying to separate out. Go ahead, John. Sorry. Yeah, um, I got a question for Jake. Yeah. I heard that uh, that the shooter uh, interjected himself into the melee and uh i kind of find it weird that a security guard would interject <laughs> himself into something without you know they're there but to protect the news group why would he interject himself into something that wasn't a danger to him yeah because again i think they wanted to get on on video i don't think they expected him to shoot him in the face but i expected they they wanted something but again exactly what you said why why did text turn and because he had the agitator in front of him. He was just in the shoving match. And he's still going. The agitator's still going at it. And he turns and walks away. I'm trying to figure out why did he turn and walk away and go towards uh, the shooter. That's what. I, that's that's the video part that I – because you can't hear anything. You can't hear any uh, – because even though you can hear the other footage, you don't hear any talking from the, from that side. All you can hear, you know, that guy, you know, he, he does uh, – he hits the, the asp on the ground to collapse it. Mm-hmm. And you can still uh, – the agitator talk about, oh, you're going to hit me with that or something like that. Um, and then you just hear this, a spray and a, and, a, and a gunshot. So, I mean, whatever happened over there happened, you know, again, within six to nine seconds, I think is what it was, but it's, it happened fast. Hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kevin. I, th- I think that, well, here's, here's, um, just even listening to it in the, the minor research I did before we had this conversation. I really wanted to hear Tig give an account of what happened since he was at least, you know, a part of it, even though he didn't witness the exact thing. Um, one thing, if you're a security professional, your first job to do, A, is to protect whoever your asset or assets is, right? That's your job. Um, and you're supposed to de-escalate the situation, right? So when you're looking to de-escalate something, even if a guy smacks you across the face, that is your chance to move your asset to protection, right? Mm-hmm. And then if the threat pre- presents to come forward and they start escalating their level of threat to where it does become dangerous, then that's when you, you know, you take the appropriate actions, you know, minimum force necessary to stop the threat after you've attempted de-escalation and calming the situation and making sure that your asset is protected. Well, clearly, 
you know, this dude, credentials or not, had no freaking idea what he was doing. He he clearly just from what occurred was more out there for himself and looking for opportunity. And I think that points out another general issue we have in America. And it was just really ingrained in this guy. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to clean up my language. Cause my, Don't worry I'm about to, it. Don't worry my, about but it. My kids, Sometimes my kids can hear what I say. So oh, I oh, oh, right. well, in that case, but, um, yeah. But here's here's the thing. Um, we have too many soft men in America right now. Right. If a guy smacks me in the face, I mean, worst case, no, if I'm at work and I'm doing my job, I got to, you know, I've been hit in the face plenty of times. Mm -hmm. My job, I couldn't just haul off and kill you because next thing you know, I would be behind the bars and I was putting people behind. Right. Mm -hmm. So I understood that by, you know, SOP and rules and regulations of the department, I couldn't do certain things. But even on the streets, if a, if Americans are believing that if I get smacked across the face, then I get to use deadly force, A, by, by law, you're not even in the right constructs, right? You know, serious physical injury and deadly force are generally identified as the two reasons. And um, serious physical injury, which is the lesser of the two, that you can respond to deadly force with is simply that you are at substantial risk of losing uh, the impairment, uh, impairment or the protracted loss of the function function of any major body part. A slap across the face, unless you're getting hit by one of those dudes that's like a professional slapper. That's a thing, by the way, if you guys know that. Those <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> that will knock <laughs> you <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, unless you're unless you're encountering one of those guys, mm -hmm. then you're not even fitting the general, you know, kind of broad definition of when you can respond with force. Mm -hmm. So we have too many, too many men in America that their nuts haven't dropped yet, right? And so you believe that something like that was, uh, needs for you to shoot somebody. So I think that that guy, for professional reasons and for just, you know, not having his nuts sex drop yet, his nuts dropping his sack yet, um, is kind of a, a representative of the that we need to get out of American culture, right? And I, I think that is a big problem. Now, I do have a question for John, since, John, you're the, you know, credential reporter here. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question for you. As far as what we know, there are always things we don't know and we'll probably never hear about. But when it comes to these riots, let's take the, the ones in the last six months. When it comes to these riots or the conflict of people at the riots, and correct me if I'm wrong, aren't the two deaths, I know we had one was that in Portland, right, where the guy was kind of jumped. This is one of Kerry Sloan's friends. He was kind of jumped and shot as he was going home from the rally. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. That guy. And then we had this this incident. So. I'm just I'm being neutral. I'm being unbiased here, but I'm just asking, don't we have the the side that identifies as left from both the individuals? Aren't they two murders to none? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Uh, some of the people will say Kyle, Kyle Rittenhouse, but I don't, I don't I think that was self-defense. But but here's the thing. Um, I've done a lot of research into Antifa. And in fact, uh, like Seven Hills and Antifa put me on their list of known fascist sympathizers whatever the hell that was supposed to mean. Um, but one of the things that is core to the philosophy is that they think that ideas rises to the level of physical force. So if you have ideas that go against their ideas, they believe physical force is justified against you because it's self-defense. Okay. That's their philosophy in a nutshell. Okay. I mean, that's well, not even like. I mean, that's, that's an I, idea, too. That's <laughs> what say. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is what they come out and say that, you know, that 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 our ideas, um, like from my ideas, from kind of lean water, right, is akin to physical violence against them. So they are allowed to use physical violence mm -hmm. in self defense to me because my ideas offend them. Mm hmm. Kind of sounds like a, go, go ahead, go ahead. Take. Sounds like a lot like jihadists. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there might be some yeah. ties there. Or no tolerance. Definitely no tolerance. You know what the crazy part is? What I would also like, even the people that are out there, and if you're supporting it, if you're, you know, one of these violent Antifa members, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're one of these violent whatever members, um, even if you take issue with, with, with guys, they take tick stands. Here's what I want you to, to, to realize. Not saying that there aren't problems and not saying we shouldn't talk about the problems. You know, I'm very vocal about the issues. Mm -hmm. However, here's here's what you have to realize from a 30,000 foot view. The same party that you are representing, that exact same party that you are helping, whether you're doing it directly or indirectly or whatever. But that same party um, abandoned me and Tig. They left him in a war zone. Right. And said, good luck. 
right, by Hillary Clinton. That's the same woman that Dan, you know, years before stood on TV and left me in a war zone and called me a super predator, right? So this party doesn't mean good for anybody, especially some of the high-ranking officials of the party. Let me say that to be fair, mm -hmm. right? They don't they don't mean good for anybody. So re think about think about it for a second. What you're supporting? Once you went past the issues and you're helping out with political agendas and you're being you know, violent and you're doing all these different things and you're helping them out. I want you to remember who you're helping. So, yeah, if I was Tig, I have a problem. Leave me in a damn war zone. See how I feel about you when I get home. Right. Um, and if you when you left me in a different type of war zone and then said that we're going to cut resources, put all your men in, in prison. These are the people that you are helping. They don't care about black or white. They don't give a damn. They care about destruction. And you're being an arm of that destructive branch. And just remember that when you're out there acting a the damn ass. Mm -hmm. Tig, you got <laughs> Uh, that was good. <laughs> but you got to remember, most of the people who are rioting and burning down buildings and stuff, they don't look like Kevin or Hank. Yeah. Well, also, they look no. like, you know, they're they're middle class. You, you white guys, people. huh? <laughs> yeah, they look like Tig and I, you know. Right. So a lot younger. Uh, than a, they're middle class white kids mm -hmm. who are told you're fighting fascists, you know, and not realizing that. They're using fascist techniques and the same techniques um, that the black shirts used in Italy and the brown shirts used in Germany in the 1930s. And they don't realize that they're using the same tactic, tactics, and they believe a lot of the same things that they did. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so yeah, I think that people, and then look at the BLM uh, division, even if you're, well, no, the BLM people that are out there at nighttime are there for destruction, not the ones that are protesting. I'm always going to believe in American spirit of protest. I, mm -hmm. I just do. Even if I disagree with what you're doing, I agree with peaceful protest. I just always will. Uh, however, yeah. for the ones that aren't out there for that purpose, and you know damn well that you're not, um, just, just remember that, you know, and if you don't know what a Marxist is, I want you to look the definition of that up. I'm not even going to attempt to explain it. And then look at what it is, look at who has supported that kind of system, and then, you know, go ahead and look up the factual, the, the factual data that the BLM organizers, the organization, the people that run the website are trained Marxists by their own admission, right? So just, just, I mean, and you're, you're yourself. just being a pawn. And let's remember that in the beginning of this uh, lockdown, right, that we're going through because of a flu, even if it's a, a naturally virulent one that came from China, right? Uh, in the Every time it's China, I die a little bit on the inside. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Um, listen, in the beginning of this, what did they do? What did they do? They let the people who were in prison out. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's always a good idea. Right? So that's... the dudes in prison, they let out. Then what did they do? They said to the law-abiding people, because I'm sure they weren't telling those dudes in prison, you have to wear a mask. They're not yeah. obviously not planning on putting them back in for that. Then they're telling the law-abiding people out there who don't want to get arrested, who want to follow the rules, no, you have to put this on. If you don't put it on, we're going to lock you up, right? And then what starts happening is when you when when uh, there's there's things going on in our country that have been going on for sure we've got to deal with it and all that kind of stuff. But when that kicks off and and uh, places started getting destroyed, you know, then it's like oh well you know we don't, we don't know where that came from. But you but you good guys you still need to stay home. These guys could come out. They don't need to wear masks. They're not going to get sick or anything like that. They're not going to spread the disease, none of that kind of stuff. You stay home. I think the, t the thing that Tig is saying here is why should I have to stay home if I also have stuff, if I want to voice my opinion on what we have to fix? Ultimately, if we actually have to fix it, if that's what's important, which I don't, I don't believe it's what's important. I think it goes to what Kevin's saying, that ultimately, you know, these guys are just using you, your pawn. They want to control you. And then they're using these guys to have us say, okay, no, we're just going to stay away from this. You know, but we can't. We cannot do that. You know, nope. if, if you think back to what happened back when with the Tea Party guys, what happened? Tea Party guys were not staying home. They were getting out there and going, yeah, we're, we're not going to take this crap anymore. We're going to change this thing. And now they're trying to say to, to certain people, no, you don't come out here. Other people, you could come out here, you could, you could after the protest, I'm, I'm with Kevin on that, right? I think all of us are. After the protest, you could stay here at night, burn every damn thing down. Destroy everything. You know, who the hell's going to pay for that? You know who pays for that? We do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... Well, I, here, 
Go ahead. Here's the, th- here's the thing. Mm-hmm. They came out and said that BLM protests do not spread coronavirus. It, it has nothing to do with the spread of coronavirus. But any other type of protest shouldn't happen because it spreads the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like oh, the coronavirus is uh, socially aware, I guess. Yeah. Well, it doesn't come out after uh, 10 o'clock either. Yeah. 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 Maybe the fires of the cities burning down and the businesses that will never come back, you know, maybe that will will get rid of, of coronavirus. Well, and that's also because people don't understand basic economics, right? Um, so when you are, once again, because I don't want anybody to say, oh, you glance past the issues, check my resume. All right. I've, I've, I've talked more about American rights in the last 30 minutes than most people have all their lives. However, when you are when you are dealing with um, the destruction that way, so everybody's like, "Oh, the businesses have insurance." Okay, you, maybe you're factually correct, right? All the businesses have insurance; they pay their premiums. So let's just say, let's just for argument's sake, say all those businesses reestablish something that cost you a dollar now costs you a dollar seventy-five, mm-hmm. right? And then what happens in that? Because they got to pay those premiums back. Now they it have costs to reinsure with that with those damages being paid insured, out. Right? Yeah. It's like if you wreck your car, what happens when you, you know, you go back, you have enough accidents, you go back, get car insurance. Now, all of a sudden, you know, your rates go up, right? If so some now, idiot runs if, into the back of me, my insurance goes up. Oh, uh, well, you got the wrong insurance. No, we'll talk just, after. no, that's just a reality. If you're involved in an accident, even but if it's not you your were, fault, your insurance goes up. How economically it affects people. Mm-hmm. Then you were talking about the people you're living, you're leaving, I'm sorry, in that community. Their wages didn't go up. Mm-hmm. So now something that costs a buck is now a buck 75, right? And so now they can afford less, but these are the same people you claim to care about. So when you're when you're you're praising the decay or the destruction and what these uh, kids are running around doing, ultimately they're going to go home, right? They're going to go home, and you're going to be left with a an area that looks like death and destruction. It's going to look chaotic, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to want to visit. You're going to have less tourists to the area. You're going to drive the economy down. You're going to kill a lot of different jobs, right, for mm-hmm. different reasons. And then even if it does boom back, it's going to be expensive. And thus, you're going to move in the people that look like the people that are destroying things while everybody else can't afford to be there. So miss me with that. They're doing this for the best of America stuff. If anybody has that mentality, because you're absolutely not doing it. You're helping out uh, big businesses in more ways that you think. And I don't think for a minute the insurance companies understand if you're there, you're going to pay us. Right. So they're not hurting. Right. They're going to pass those cost uh, measures down. And if you think, for example, if you think that, oh, let's just say insurance company A insures this building and they have a billion dollar loss if they have vehicle insurance or they have homeowners insurance you're going to notice your premiums are going to go up they're going to start charging you more even if you don't live in that direct area you can live in a different state but they are about making their money back Mm -hmm. right so it's going to cost us all in the end so it's before you praise it please understand people please understand even some of the economical things that it is doing to you, even if you're not living directly in that area, you will feel it one day or another. Yeah. Uh, let me ask this from Tig, because we haven't had Tig uh, on here for a while, right? Especially since this thing kicked off. What was it that you saw out there that uh, really upset you? Can you you know, give us some insight on that? Of all this stuff going on since we got into this lockdown situation, I think the last time I saw you was at SHOT Show. So that's January. I would say, uh, you know, I did one rally for pretty much a uh, protest in the COVID, you know, the, uh, just watching what the law enforcement was doing to civilians, you know, mm-hmm. you know, arresting, arresting business owner because they wanted to open up so they could feed their kids and their employers could, the employees could feed their kids, um, arresting moms and dads in parks with their kids when they're actually the only ones out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just that, that's what really kind of started me just pissing me off. Cause again, I, you know, I'll back the cops too, but you know, I can, I can, I'll bash them at the same time I, I back them up. You know, if mm-hmm. you're, you're, I mean, cause that was completely wrong, man. I mean, that was just completely wrong. It should be, it's we're, we're in a free society. Business owners should be allowed to open up. I should be allowed to go in that business. If I want to the businesses, Hey, could you please wear a mask? Either, either I want something in there enough where I put a mask on or I go to another store, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it, we're in a free country. We should be able to decide when and where and how we want to do something. Mm-hmm. You know, just put out what put out how it's being spread, put out, you know, precautions you can take, but there's no reason to mandate, there's no reason to enforce it. Again, we're grown ups. We're not kids. Mm-hmm. You know, this, this ain't New York. We're not nanny the nanny nation. But now actually we are the nanny nation and we're we're a 
fighting by it. You know, I think everybody eventually is going to get COVID. It's just a matter of when. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to obviously affects people different in different ways. Again, it, I, it's obviously it's a real virus. Mm-hmm. It's really killing people, but not in the way they're saying it. I mean, what initially saying it's going to kill freaking two million people or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. And the, the virus itself has only has killed like nine or ten thousand people. But with underlining issues, it's killed 200 something thousand people. Mm-hmm. And again, that that's what, you know, just stuff like that was pissing me off. And then watching the business owners trying to protect their businesses, uh, getting pulled out in the street, getting beat up, that uh, retired officer getting shot for trying to protect his, his, his uh, the pawn shop, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. just stuff like this. Me, kid who died in a fire because the protesters wouldn't allow uh, emergency vehicles to come in. You had an eight year old girl who was murdered in the back of a truck by, by I think it was the NFAC organization because they went to a barrier a little bit too far and she went to go turn around and went past the barrier and they freaking shot the car and killed the eight year old girl in the back. No, okay, I don't know. I'm not sure if that was attributed to the NFAC guys. I don't well, think fact. Just, let me just say this, John, just because I don't want somebody to take that snip and use it against you, bro. Yeah. I mean, so let me just let me just let me just fix it real quick for somebody, you know, spins it. So he was not a part of impact. Impact had been there earlier and they were turned. I believe they were they were said that they didn't they didn't think they were needed or whatever. The guy that did that. Um, was independent on his own. And when that woman pulled up to that barrier, you were absolutely correct in that. Mm-hmm. When she pulled up to that barrier and was attempting to turn around, that guy, uh, you know, shot at the car and did kill the eight-year-old child in the back. So mm-hmm. just, just saying it that way, nobody takes that snippet and spins it yeah, on you. Yeah, we don't want to give anyone... Uh, first of all, if, if we know better, we don't want to say, you know, something that some, that some of us here may realize. And, you know, obviously you're going through a whole bunch of uh, different scenarios there. But there's a lot of horrible things that we're seeing. You know, yeah, um, well. you know I remember looking at... Uh, did you guys see where there was someone... Somehow they got into a wrong situation with these guys. And they were in the car. And the dog is barking. And they're trying to smash and get through this, yep. this vehicle yeah. to that guy's dog and all that kind of stuff. That, I mean, I know this may seem weird... But that just like enraged me. Like, what? What the hell are you doing? Yeah, I heard it was he. It was a the same person that he they were just with. Mm-hmm. But I heard it wasn't even the. the yeah. But yeah, it, they just don't freaking. They just want to destroy. It's, it's insanity. Just, it's like I saw. Uh, I think this was in L.A. There was a protest. I think it was a Prius, right? You guys can tell. You could, someone can tell me if I'm wrong on this one. A Prius right. trying to go through there. A Prius. Right. So, who's driving a Prius? <laughs> I mean, come on, seriously. Who's actually driving a Prius? That has to be someone who's liberal, right? Well, I saw someone do a, a LS swap on the Prius. Well, okay, that wasn't an LS swap Prius. That was a Prius that was in the wrong place. That's I've seen that Prius, by the way. But the thing is, is that they decided to go after this person and run them off the road and go. just let them go. If it's a lot of times, I think looking at this, and I think Pro- Tig probably knows this better than me, but I saw things like this when I was living in Nigeria. It's not America anymore. It's some crazy third world country that there's people just running amok and doing whatever the hell they want to. And in any other situation, people will be out there going like, "Where the hell is America?" And we're in America, and I'm thinking, "Where, where the hell is America?" Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.